Hello and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. It's been a little while since I've played this, but I can pretty much remember what I've been, what I was doing recently, and what I'm going to be doing next. So the last thing I did in the the end of the uh, before, before I started now was to bring over a load of this uranium 235 to this uh, this specific chest here, which is dumping it into this machine that's making me some atomic bombs. Uh, I've got about ten of only ten of them. Wow, they're um. They take a long time to build and they take a lot of uranium. So this has basically been me going over to the uranium plant over here, the um, where I'm doing all the, the enrichment, and then grabbing all of the uranium out of this box, which is a thousand, bringing it back over here and dumping it into this box. And that makes me about 10 of these, uh, of these missiles. So they're rather expensive and that's why I've not been using a lot more of them. However, that's, oh dear, this has gone very, very wrong. Um, oh, I have since fixed it. I just haven't tidied it up. Oh, all right, let's tidy it up. There we go. More junk in the inventory. Anyway, so I've... Oops, this is bad too. Oh, no, this, this is okay. It's only temporarily pits. Yeah. Oh, a rocket. Um, okay, so now I've got all these extra bombs. And the idea was, as I was saying at the end of the last episode, I've got that area down the bottom that I was working on clearing out. So I've gone down there with an artillery train and lots of turrets and things and shot up as much as I can of everything around there. I've got a lot of red ammo. Um, which is which is a good start, should we say, but not remotely enough. Um, it's cleared up some of the air cleared out some of the area I want to claim, but there's still a lot of it that still needs a bit of um, liberation from the biters. I can't clear this out with the artillery, because if I park the artillery down here, it can only reach about this far. And if I went down here and if I, I could theoretically come in and build a load more walls, put an outpost here perhaps and start building up something here to defend with. But that feels like a lot of work. So I'm going to try something a little bit different. Um, something a little bit more direct and see how that goes instead. <laughs> this will either go really, really well or really, really badly. And I guess we'll find out. First thing I'm going to do is clear up some space in my inventory because I don't need a lot of this junk at all at all. Just it's completely unnecessary. Um, in fact, that, that's probably enough. I was good the ammo as well. And now I'm going to claim all of this ammunition as well because I need a lot more for, for my cunning plan. Then I shall fly out on my jetpack over the forests, over the oil fields, and up to, yeah, about here I think this is a good point. So we'll land, land here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build myself a small um, little outpost of turrets here and then did I install the... No, I didn't. <laughs> There's there was a mod I was meaning to install where you can just drag across lots and lots of things and it'll and it'll split your inventory between them. I apparently don't have that, so we'll have to um, uh, try and remember how to how to split things by halves like that. And maybe a bit more of these. Okay, so the idea of this is that I've got this area here where there's a really thick concentration of turrets that hopefully have enough ammunition in them. Uh, some of them only got three, that's not going to last very long. Uh, to defend any sort of any that any that against any biters that I happen to bring back with me. The next part of the plan is to switch over to the exciting rockets. And now to be very, very careful because if I fire this in the wrong place, I should be very sad. But I can now come down here and put that over there. <laughs> and that, not only does that wipe out basically an entire nest with one shot, the other big advantage of the, um, the, the atomic bombs is it wipes out most of the biters that were there as well. If I do that with the, um, with the artillery train, then yeah, sure, it'll eventually take out all of the nests, but you then get this flood of biters towards wherever you were. This way, well, as the bite, the bite, a lot of the biters are still running around, which is a bit of a shame, but it's got rid of an enormous number of them. So again up here. And then run away. <laughs> Back to my turrets. I think the flying the flying away dis uh, distracts the biters or confuses them, especially if you're flying over water. So that might be, whilst that might be a little bit cheap, it's probably going to help keep me alive. <laughs> so hopefully I'll get to continue to doing that. Another reason I'm doing this is um, because I had to, I had some feedback on one of my from one of my videos saying that um, 
So some, one of my one of my viewers was uh, was quite impressed by the um, by the atomic bombs and was hoping I would uh, I'd use a few more of them. So yeah, they are brilliant and devastating. And no, don't bite me because then I fall out of the sky and then I'm easy to catch. And don't spit at me either for the same reason. <laughs> Run away. Use the cliffs to my advantage. There we go. And if I bring myself back around here now, I can just. Uh, Go and hide by the um, by the turrets. Although they've they've, they've they've lost interest again, so that's all right. I hope everyone's enjoying the theatre of the um, of the atomic bombs. They are definitely spectacular. As I said, that the the only problem with them is that they do leave. Oop! No, run away! <laughs> is that whilst they are enormously effective? They don't quite take out all of the biters, and then you have to run away <laughs> again and, and hope for the best. Here we go. That's gone quite well so far, actually, I have to say. Yeah, and these defences are pretty good as well, although, as, as expected, those ones in the middle have immediately got through all of their ammunition. Let's take... Can I take half of the ammunition from this one? Yes, I can. Excellent. Okay, so this is going pretty well. I've um, wiped out the big nests that were... I can't even see them now. There's, oh, there's, there's... Yeah, they've got these scorch marks. So there's one there. That one I didn't actually manage to destroy all of, which is a bit of a shame. The, uh, it was too big even for a nuke. Um, I'm going to try and go around... So, so the idea is I want to claim everywhere from all the way around here. And, that, um, and, pff, and probably up here as well. So I don't think I've got enough nukes for this, but I would like to be able to clear down here as well and maybe then back and bring a railway line around the top of this island and down here and carry on from there. I may end up coming down here with the artillery anyway just to finish these guys off and to try and scare all or and try and attract all of the biters that are lurking around from that have been confused by the nukes. Flying down over the water does feel a little bit cheaty, I have to admit. Ooh, at least until something like that happens. <laughs> because it does throw the biters off completely and it means that they don't chase me like they would otherwise but still i feel like there's enough of a challenge from the biters and the biters in a way i i don't feel like combat is the real point of factorio so the biters i feel i don't feel so bad about just taking them out in relatively cheap ways i suppose i could turn them off completely but that feels going like it's going a bit too far this is still a huge base, even after I hit it with a nuke. This is ridiculous. Ah! Uh, help. Oh no, I blew myself up. <laughs> okay, that was embarrassing. Oh no, it's going to take forever to get back down there. And I haven't got my jetpack either, so getting in there is going to be rather interesting. Okay, let's um, end this part of this episode here because there's something else I wanted to talk about as well and that's yet another coronal uh, mass coronal mass ejection impact on uh, on Norvis um, and this was well I, I after the last one I said I know I'll build up a huge area of um, uh, what do you call it? It's a huge area of accumulators and generate enough power that uh, sorry store enough power rather that next time one of these happens I'll be able to defend against it and it'll all be fine uh, Guess what I didn't do? Yeah, so I um, I, I, I knew there was not going to be another one coming in. It was going to be, and, and I needed about I don't know, 10 gigajoules or something ridiculous like that to protect against it. But unfortunately, um, procrastination and general sl slackness happened, and I never actually got, and I, and it was going to be such a big field of um, of accumulators that I just didn't get. I just, well, I just didn't build it to be honest. So. Um, and, and I thought I'd just just see just see how it went. So here it is. It's the uh, the mass the mass ejection has just hit the uh, hit the base. I'm on my way back up to, to an area where I can sort of try and help deal with it. Um, the the umbrella defence has kicked in as normal. Now if we zoom out a little bit here, you can see the sheer amount of power the umbrella defence is using. It's got to a gigawatt already, and it's still climbing. Um, you can see the accumulators kicking out enough power to just to, to, to compensate for it keep it going that's good the uh, nuclear plant has kicked into full blast as well but the accumulators are running out very very quickly i've got 30 gigajoules stored and that's lasted well this long now that's shut down everything's run out of power 
massive destruction happening over here in my green circuit production facility. Oh, that's hor horrible. That's that is absolutely horrific. <laughs> um, I mean, this wouldn't be so bad if it had struck somewhere else. Like where it is now, that's not so bad. It's hitting the, it's blowing up solar panels, sure, and that's not great. It's blowing up the accumulators and the bells. But where it first landed, that just struck straight across all of the all of the boxes that are picking up all of the green circuits that are being made by the factory. So there's literally thousands of green circuits in there and those have actually just been completely destroyed. Oh, so it's, it's just going in there and completely wrecking this sub factory. It's ridiculous. Oh, going down there taking out the, uh, the defences as well. I mean, that doesn't matter. It's in the middle of the factory now. It's 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 all completely defended by the, um, by the outer ring. But still, that's... Oh pretty horrific but again I don't really care about any of this any of this destruction this is all just things that can be replaced quite easily it's the the sheer quantity of those green circuits in all the in all the uh, the boxes and waiting in the station to be loaded onto trains that was the most horrendous part because the sheer amount of of iron and copper that's and, and stone that's gone into making those it's oh, horrific but I suppose now it'll give the it gives the factory something to build and it could have been worse if that had struck in the if that had struck the uh, the blue circuit factory in the same way, that would have been much much worse because the blue circuits take so much more in the way of resources to build that I I would would have been a lot sadder should we say. <sighs> oh well, oh, and that's triggered a um, a train. Yeah, that that iron train is. I don't know. I, I'm not sure exactly why that iron train got there. Um, I'm going to guess that it was probably going to try and drop off the um, that, all that iron in the in the green circuit production area, and then the station got blown up. So it, it then well it then didn't. So now the next thing to do is to trundle in over there <laughs> with my um, with my construction train and go in and repair it all. Do I have? I've got a load of I've got a load of solar panels. There should be there's loads of belts in the in the train. There's um, should be various boxes and this train is is intended to basically go out and build factories like this so it should have most of the stuff that it needs I guess we'll find out when we get there I didn't catch how many buildings have been destroyed by that um, oh yeah I decided to hop out here and uh, go in and fix up this or this rail that got struck by the uh, the mass ejection as well because you know I want to fix up stuff, as much stuff as I can and it's yeah okay. It's all still got green health. Um, oh, never, have I run out of power for my my robot? No, I haven't run out of power in my robot. I don't know why they stopped. Um, but to be honest, it's probably quicker to do this by hand anyway. Um, yeah, they were still at um, at green levels of health, so it's not the end of the world that they've got um, hit by that. But it's it's still. I feel like I like to go in and keep things fixed up and in, in, generally in good condition. Uh, now the bot's going out. Repair the walls. It's hardly worth it, but yeah. And the train's unloading. <laughs> the station, this station, it hasn't been built with um, smart inserters, uh, filter inserters, so it's just pulled out a load of railway line onto the um, onto into the uh, uh, ammunition unloading station. So right, let's get on with the important stuff. Let's start. Let's put a load of a load of bots into the um, construction uh, system here. And they can start building over everything. I'll give them also give them a load of repair packs. And there we go. Got a massive flood of bots going out and just fixing up everything. That's fantastic. That's how it should be. <laughs> um, stick in a requester chest, and I can put in a load of belts as well for the uh, so that the bots can go out and repair the destroyed belts. And now it's to be honest, it's now just pretty much a case of just letting the bots get on with it. They know what they're doing. Um, they can go out and, and, and do all the repairs that are needed. I think I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna replace all of the. Um, the damaged green inserters with uh, white inserters. That has a couple of advantages. It makes sure that only the right things ever get passed through, just in case something ends up on a on a um, in, on a belt somewhere where it should. So I'll just go through and replace all of them. And of course, now I need to program them so that they will actually insert um, green circuits. And this this, as I say, it doesn't it doesn't protect against the wrong train arriving here. But then that shouldn't happen. But it does protect against, I don't know, maybe if some stone ends up on the wrong belt or something stupid like that, it get pa gets passed into the um, into one of the green circuit uh, boxes, then it'll get, um, it'll get it'll just get stored there, which is a bit of a waste of space, but it's better than having it loaded onto a train and going into the wrong place and jamming up everything somewhere else. 
Oh, as you can see by the sheer amount of purple up here, there's a lot of this needed, uh, a lot of belts needed. So let's put some more in this box as well. Just give them as many as it needs. Have I replaced all the boxes along there? I think all the all, and all the inserters. I'm not quite sure. I think there's some. I think it's now mostly down to belts. So let's leave this for a, a, a moment or two and get all this passed through. I'm going to get rid of all of these um, solar panels down here because I don't really need them. They're um, and I'd rather I, I'm, because I'm generating it most pretty much. I'm, uh, with the ex exception of when there's one of those massive coronal mass ejections, um, I'm generating more than enough power from the nuclear now. So rather than replace these with new, uh, brand new um, solar panels, I'm just going to pull the whole area up. And you can see, yes, okay, this means all the all the wrecked ones are just sitting there on the ground. Um, but you know, we'll think of that as a sort of a, a memorial to the um, destroyed nuclear destroyed. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, destroyed solar panel facilities over here from the mass ejection, and I'm going to clear up these belts as well, and all these all these turrets around the bottom. So I don't, there's no point in having these here. So there's no point in rebuilding them. Um, I could just rip them all up, to be honest. But um, I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of ammunition and stuff sitting down there. Ah, oh, the um, as, yeah, you can see the uh, the copper starting to flow again as the belts are all replaced over here. That's ticking over nicely. I'll give it some underground, or some of the more the, the funny types of belts, like, like uh, splitters and undergrounds, or just let the, let my personal bots do that. Oh, and this is the um, yeah, the, I think I've mentioned this before with the uh, the trees that are somehow growing between things and stopping me build, building when it was actually okay before. I think some some sort of um, hitboxes must have changed in an update somewhere, which is causing some minor issues there. But yeah, never mind. Okay, is that everything? There's some purple there what's that oh that was a um some combinators have been destroyed <laughs> and and some lights have been destroyed as well but i don't have any spares for those but i don't need lights anymore because i've got the um what you call it the night vision goggles so i'll uh, probably get rid of those but now i'm having a look on the map to see if there's any more of those cog icons flashing but apart from the ones for the lights and they don't seem to be so that's basically okay there is a train waiting to come in it's trying to get to that station so i'm going to get rid of that now because i don't need any of this to be loaded in here uh but it is gumming everything up, so let's get rid of my um, construction train for now. Here we go, and that'll allow that that'll allow the ammunition train to run through there and then just clear off again because there's no station for it to stop at, and then all the other trains can start running again as normal. And I think that's that's basically fixed it all up. There's those walls and those belts in there that I haven't bothered to repair because they're not in use anymore. But other than that, that's now well. Okay, let's get rid of these lights um, because I don't need them. <laughs> As previously discussed. Oh, and there's a there's a um, a bot trying to trying to place another another belt up the tree. So let's let's tell another bot to get rid of the tree. And there we go, all sorted. I seem to have, I've just noticed I left an enormous number of belts up there, but yeah, never mind. Oh, that's one of my bots. It's going to follow me forever now until it gets until it finally manages to catch up with me. Okay, so that was. Um, Lawrence attempts to recover from a massive coronal ejection. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Um, and before the next episode, I'm going to go down here and, and, and carry on a bit with the um, with, with the atomic bombs and try and be a little bit um, neater and more organised with them and take out the rest of these nests without dying too many more times. Uh, we'll <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But hopefully by the next episode, I'll have built the wall over here and down here. Maybe even have built the one up here, although that is pushing it a bit. And I'll be ready to go off and play in space again. Uh, someone said in one of the comments that um, I should ha I should have a look into cryonite because that's a good way of getting water up into space much more easily. Because then instead of having to put it into these barrels, which I'm doing for some reason, I can never find where I'm doing this. Oh, here, here it is. Yeah. So instead of putting the water into barrels here and then passing it up all the way up to here and then firing loads of it into space using this massive gun here. Um, instead of using barrels, I, I believe I, I get the impression that what I can do is I can use cryonite to freeze the water and then send massive blocks of, water, of, of ice in the, um, in the, in the uh, delivery capsule system instead. And that supposedly is more, much more efficient. Um, is this how I do it? Yeah. Cr okay, cryonite slush and water makes one water ice. So that's... Uh, Presumably a water ice can then be... So I can put 200 of them. So 
100 water makes one ice, and I can put 200 of them in a delivery capsule, so that's 20,000 water in a delivery capsule instead of 1,000. So it's like 20 times. So it is literally 20 times better. And presumably I can also then, yeah, I can also melt the water back, one ice back into 100 water. So that's going to mean I can fit literally 20 times as much water in each delivery cap cannon capsule, and that's going to be far more efficient. If only I could do the same with the vulcanite that I'm bringing back down, but still, at least, at least that's a good, that's a good start in that direction. One of the other things I want to do is come up with some way of making the delivery cannon capsules on um, on Miokin, um, because they, at the moment, I'm, I'm shipping them up um, by. At the moment, I'm shipping them up by. Um, oh, no, that one. That's what, no. There we go. At the moment, I'm shipping them up by rocket, which is a rather slow and frustrating process um, because it's just it, because you have to I have to send a rocket, which is kind of expensive. Uh, copper I can get on on Miokin, no problem. There's massive copper fields, so I can just mine that. Ex uh, heat shielding is made of st stone. There is steel. Um, there's iron up there, so I can get steel. And also, I'm going to be recycling ba uh, barrels, um, although only temporarily. Uh, sulfur. Sulfur might be tricky. Um, glass is fine, copper is fine, steel is fine, plastic. So I'm going to need. Uh, I think there might be coal up there. It's, it's the petroleum gas that I'm going to need to make. Um, if there's coal up there, that, that could that that'll be okay. Um, I'll need to check that because I'm going to need petroleum gas for plastic, for sulfur for the low density structures and for sulfur for the ex explosives and coal for the explosives as well. So let's have a quick look while we're talking about it. Uh, go away. Myokin. New surface. Are there, are there coal deposits up here? That would be really cool. Yes, there are. Excellent. It's not very big. Are there big coal deposits up here? 400,000. That's a bit better. 300,000. Okay. So I can go up here. I can build up... A, if, I, if I build up... A coal mine here, a copper mine here, um, and an iron mine maybe here, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, There's a, uh, find, just find, I'll just find a decent big patch. Then I can feed all of these in together, stir them with a big spoon, and I'll get out some, um, and, and I'll be able to make, make the um, delivery cannon capsules on the other side, because the problem I've run into, oh no there are, interesting, there's, there are loads of, oh, this has stopped because this is what did it, eh? I've run out of water because this has turned off recharging of power out. Why was there a power outage? This is interesting. It wasn't a power outage. This is this is fine. There's no problems there. Is it just that there aren't any pylons up here? It's just not, yeah, it's just not covered by a pylon. <laughs> For some strange reason. Okay. So hopefully, this, right, this bot will bring a pylon over. This is where we find out how well my system all works in, um, and how well it's, whether I've made any mistakes and how it's set up. So that, that puts that pylon down. This now starts working. It should send the signal back to, um, back to Norvis. The cannon on Norvis should now start firing again. And we should, fairly quickly, get some water being delivered again should maybe I haven't actually automa automated that yet uh, <laughs> okay show me Norvis instead right uh, where's my water where's my water cannon that's up here somewhere here we go this one so it's receiving a signal but that's just oh it's just I haven't I haven't automated this one yet okay that's why <laughs> So let's let, let that run for a minute or two, and uh, we'll get some more water up there. And, we should, and then that should be, from that, we should then start getting these coming back again fairly quickly. Because we shall... Yep, there we go. So the water, water is arriving. It's going into there. Got some water. This is now running again. This is now running again. So we need to wait for that to filter through to here, and it should all start playing, playing nicely again. Okay, right, good. That was a... Um, a random quick bug fix. I need what. So what I need to do with this is I need to put in another another combinator up here, 
with a negative number in it and join it up to this feed that back down to the system on on Norvis and have it start feeding feeding the water through when there's a negative when there's when this is, has less than it wants to have um, the other problem is this barrel thing here which I need to recycle but yeah lots to do lots to do that'll come later <laughs> thank you for watching and I'll see you next time <laughs>